עושה דואר, עושה עוד פעם. Uh, one question, Adriana, it will be possible to share the presentation uh, with the participant afterwards? Yes, absolutely. Okay. It's, for, it's for them. And the recording too, I guess. Yes, sure. Great. Hello, everybody that uh, have joined us. Uh, we will start uh, in one minute. We're waiting uh, for some people to join. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start. Um, so good uh, afternoon, good morning uh, for uh, everybody. Uh, I'm happy to open this uh, webinar on strategic opportunities for Israel private sector with the IDB. Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Ayal Medan. Uh, I'm the director of uh, multilateral development banks uh, division in the Ministry of Finance. Um, we are very happy. Uh, to, to have with us today, uh, dear guests from the IDB uh, will share with us uh, their, their presentations on the IDB procurement policies and also the uh, Israeli uh, business community in Connect Americas. Uh, so we have here with us uh, five speakers, uh, which I will introduce. Mr. Anthony Estevadonal, Derdal, sorry, IDB representative in Europe and Israel. Uh, Mr. Matan Safran, Director of North and Latin America Department uh, in, uh, and Finance Development Institution Department in the Ministry of uh, Economy and Industry. Mrs. Adriana Salazar, uh, Procurement Specialist in IDB. Mr. Francisco Estrazolas, uh, Integration and Trade Senior Specialist in the IDB. Mrs. Victoria Flores, Resource Mobilization uh, Division Chief uh, Office of uh, Outreach and Partnership. Uh, all are very uh, relevant to you, our guests and uh, our audience. And uh, okay, and that following the, st the speakers, we will have uh, 15 minutes uh, of Q&A session. And uh, I do encourage you to post your questions in the Q&A feature uh, and uh, not the, the chat uh, button. So please uh, be aware of that. 
and we will have uh, we will ask, uh, have a chance to give a, a floor for those uh, questions later on. Uh, I would like to thank, first of all, to our uh, guests from the IDB uh, and especially for the people who uh, organized this event, uh, Karen, Paola, and Esther from the IDB. Uh, also, uh, Israel's uh, representative at the bank, Matan Levari, uh, and also uh, our partners from the Foreign Trade Administration at the uh, Ministry of Economy, Matan Safran, and especially Adi Khaliva and Ifat from the Israeli Economic Mission in Washington. Uh, and without further ado, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Anthony, um, IDB representative in Europe and Israel to give uh, his welcome remarks. Anthony, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Eyal, for the, for the introduction. Can you hear me well? Yes, very good. So thanks uh, for, the, for, the, for the introduction. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone here in DC and on, on, on Israel. I'd like to first thank uh, the government of Israel, to you, Eyal, to, to Matan Levari, our executive director, also to Matan Safran uh, at, the, at the Ministry of Economy and Industry uh, for organizing with us this, uh, this seminar, this, uh, this workshop. Also, thanks to the Embassy of Israel here in DC, very helpful also in organizing the event and also to all our uh, IDB, IDB team. Let me just very briefly, just in a, in a three, four minutes, uh, introduce you uh, some features of the new, uh, in the new IDB Vision 2025 that our president uh, launched just a few weeks ago in our annual meetings. I think it's a good context for this uh, conversation to share with you the, the vision of the new administration at the, at the bank. Uh, and also to just to, to give you some uh, some examples of the of the record of this very important collaboration that we are having with uh, Israel at the at the bank. Uh, as you know, we have a new president as of October last year. Uh, this new administration launched uh, what we call the Vision Vision 2025. It was presented to our governors uh, just a few uh, weeks ago in our annual meetings in Barranquilla in Colombia. This is a vision that you can also find uh, in our website if you want to explore in much more detail what it means for the bank, this, uh, our work with our clients in the next few years. But in a nutshell, and I think as, as relevant for this, uh, for this seminar, let me say that this is a very much a vision uh, anchoring uh, in partnering with the private sector as the region recovers from this uh, pandemic. That's going to be a very important uh, area of work for, for us. And that's why it's so important this conversation today with, uh, with you. Uh, and as we partner with the, par the, the private sector, the type of priorities that the bank will be focusing on, which again, I think will be very relevant for the conversation, uh, will be in, in a few areas uh, that I'm just going to highlight. One is to uh, try to look for opportunities as we recover from the pandemic. As you know, for us, the 2020 was a lot of focus for the bank was on the health sector. We really strengthen our support to our countries in the health area. This was 2020. 2021, there will be uh, still major efforts for the vaccination rollout in the region. That's going to be a big priority for the bank. But as we move ahead, especially 2022 uh, and in the, in the, in the, in the, into the future, the bank will st start looking for, for new opportunities uh, for the region. Uh, we will be focusing a lot of our efforts on how to attract uh, foreign direct investment into the region as many potential regional value change are being restructured. So there's opportunities for the region to be part in a much more efficient way of this new architecture of uh, production in, uh, in the world economy. Uh, job creation, entrepreneurship, uh, SMEs will be a critical area of uh, focus for the bank. Again, I think very relevant for this conversation. Uh, and the digital economy, as you know, this is, a, this is, a, this is an area that uh, all of us will have to uh, move on. And I think it's an area that has been accelerated, as you well know, by the pandemic. And this will be a, a big priority area for the, for the bank. Uh, and there will be a two kind of, a, kind of a transversal issues in our work. Climate change, gender will be still very much uh, the priorities of our, of our work. This vision 2025, I think, will be very much reflected today, at least in two presentations that we will share with you. 
one by our procurement colleagues. Uh, Adriana, as you know, the bank is uh, today the, one of the main sources of financial uh, multilateral finance in the in the region. So there's a lot of procurement opportunities in our projects, and I think this is part of the the conversation and the, and the dialogue today with potential uh, collaboration with uh, uh, companies from from Israel with interest in uh, in looking into our into our projects. And also the, the bank is becoming one of the main uh, uh, platforms for convening uh, uh, the private sector in many areas, in particular SMEs. And Francisco uh, will be talking about one of the main platforms that the bank has launched a few years ago. I was actually the manager of the department when this platform was launched, Connect Americas. And I think this is also a very important uh, area of potential collaboration. Just to finish and just to give you a flavor of what has been the record for the last few years, uh, this is an increasingly important partner for us. Israel has been a strategic ally for, for, for many years now, and it's becoming, I think, more and more important as we, as we, as we move along. Uh, we, have, we are now actually working, just to give you some examples, with the Ministry of Finance in a, in a new co-financing uh, mechanism for, uh, for our non-sovereign uh, operations. We're expected to raise uh, maybe up to $250 million from um, Israel, Israel institutional invest, investors for this, for this fund. This is a highly priority area for, for us in the coming months. Uh, with all the delays, of course, that, that the COVID has imposed, this is still a very, a very high priority. Uh, in terms of sectors, uh, there are many, of course, uh, opportunities. With Israel, we have been working a lot, and I think there's lots of opportunities still in a, in a traditional area, but more and more very much uh, uh, open to, to new technologies, like is the water, the water and sanitation sector. This is a still critical area in our, in our region. Uh, less traditional sector, but very important for our collaboration with Israel are cybersecurity. As you know, Latin America is becoming more and more uh, into, into the digital world and uh, you know, cyber security issues will be extremely uh, important for our governments, for our private sector. And I think this is a, a very important area of collaboration with, uh, with, uh, with you. Uh, and health. Health is actually a, a very important area. Of course, we have seen what has happened with, uh, with the COVID and how we implement uh, more and more digital tools into the health sector, I think is an increasing area of interest for us. This is just to give you some, some examples. Uh, the last one I want to give you, which is relevant for today, is the, is the Startup Nation Central, which is a, uh, an initiative jointly with uh, Connect Americas. Uh, today and uh, uh, Pancho Francisco will 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 work will will tell will tell a little bit more about this. We have, I think, more than five thousand Israeli uh, Israeli companies that are part of the of the platform, and we hope that we can increase uh, this number into the into the into the near future. With this, I think I'll pass the word uh, to my uh, colleagues. Uh, I'm not sure who is next, but uh, look forward to to this conversation. Thank you all for, for joining us today in this, in this workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, now I give the floor to uh, Matan Safran, Director of North and Latin America Department and Financial Development Institution Deva Department in the Ministry of Economy and Industry. Thank you, Igal. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, I'm very much honored to, to take part in this uh, webinar. So my name is Matan. I have in my capacity two uh, uh, very, very important roles as, as I see them. One is uh, managing our economic nations in the region, both North and, and Latin America. And the second, which is not uh, le it's even more important, is uh, the coordination of all our activities with the international financial institutions. So I'm very happy uh, uh, to open this webinar. I will start, uh, Jan mentioned all the names, so I will, not, I will not repeat the names, but I will start by thanking the IDB and its wonderful staff for their cooperation in, with Israel in general. And through this event uh, today, uh, to see your faces, to see your reaction and how open you are to the collaboration with Israel actually says it all. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our partners from the Ministry of Finance, Yal and Matan, and our team in the embassy in, in uh, Washington. Uh, last but not least, I would like to thank the Israeli companies who chose, chose to join us today and take part in the IDB's initiatives to make this great region more prosperous and more sustainable for its citizens. 
Um, as a leader of uh, innovation, Israel sees great importance in uh, sharing Israeli experience and best practices with various departments in the Inter-American Development Bank, which seeks uh, for new solutions to develop to the to development challenges and seek to create opportunities for the poor and vulnerable populations in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, during 2010, despite the global economic crisis, Israel moved from the status of a developing economy to a developed country. This change made Israel approachable and more accessible when collaborating with developed countries. And I'm very happy that the IDB is one of the ways to uh, actually sustain this approach. One of the ways to achieve the goal of knowledge sharing is the contribution to the trust funds which are managed by the IDB. Currently, the state of Israel is a donor of two active funds. And Anthony mentioned the, the sectors. I will go into the funds a little bit. So the Cybersecurity Fund, the Ministry of Economy and Industry in, in uh, cooperation with the Israeli National Cyber Directorate uh, contributed uh, $3 million to set up uh, a cybersecurity fund which conducts workshop, workshops and, co and courses in Israel on cybersecurity and provides technical consultations and assistance to Latin American countries. Uh, the second fund is the Water Fund, the IDB and Israel's Ministry of Economy and Industry partner to foster innovative technologies in water utilities through new pilot programs in Latin America and the Caribbean region. The collaboration involved knowledge exchange, training, and pilot project design. Uh, Israel sees the IDB as the ideal partner for uh, strengthening ties and increasing cooperation with this region and looks forward to fruitful collaborations in the future. Our trade and economic mission at the Embassy uh, of Israel in Washington, DC, manages the relationship and the, the relations and the partnership with the international financial institutions in general, and uh, more precise with the IDB and the World Bank. And uh, on behalf of the uh, on behalf of the Israel Ministry of Economy and Industry, and they have many tasks, but uh, the most important ones, which are worth mentioning here, are to promote Israeli disruptive technologies and solutions for development challenges through engagement with the international financial institutions uh, to identify strategic uh, initiatives to support and facilitate business opportunities uh, at the international financial institutions for Israeli organizations, companies, and individuals, and to plan and ex execute delegations, workshops, webinars, and high-level events. Um, Israeli companies that are interested in the region and would like to receive more uh, information, I will share later uh, the link uh, to our uh, different missions abroad. Through this link, you can approach any of our missions in the targeted countries and to uh, work with them in order to collaborate uh, in this region. And I would also like to mention again, Anthony mentioned it, uh, the very important and uh, practical tool of Connect Americas, which we are very happy with. So this is also, uh, again, a platform which is, we see it as even, I would say, revolutionary in a way that we can connect the opportunities and the challenges of the region to the Israeli companies. Um, I, was, I will uh, finish by uh, thanking again to all uh, uh, the people who organized uh, this uh, webinar and took part in it. And me and my team are available uh, in order to assist any of the sides who, uh, who would like to co collaborate better or, or uh, receive additional information on how to work with Israel and between Israel and the IDB. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matan. And uh, now I give the floor to uh, Adriana Salazar, a procurement specialist at the IDB. And uh, we'll talk about the uh, IDB's procurement policies. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Adriana, procurement specialist at IDB based in Washington, DC. And today I'm broadcasting from Mexico, the wonders of the virtual world. Um, well, let me get started with this overview. Uh, can you all see my screen? 
Yes. Yes. I guess yes. Okay, perfect. Well, but before we get into procurement, I would like to first give an introduction to the to the IDV, just to to set the stage. So at the bank, we work to improve lives in Latin America and the Caribbean through the financial and technical support for countries to reduce poverty and inequality, and we help improve we help improve health and education and advance infrastructure. We're ultimate aim is to achieve development in a sustainable, climate-friendly way. We have a history that dates back to 1959, and today we are the leading source of development and financing for Latin America and the Caribbean. We provide loans, grants, technical assistance, and we also conduct extensive research. The group is comprised by three uh, partner institutions. We have the IDB, which works with the public sector, we have the IDB Invest, which serves the private sector, and the IDB Lab, which is the innovation laboratory of the group. We have 48 member countries, 28 are borrowing countries, and uh, 22 are the non-borrowing, and of course, uh, Israel is, is part of, of our group. We give, to give you an idea of the size of the procurement market in the region, is about 800 billion. That is a large, large market that uh, this is money that is spent annually in public procurement. If we finance around one to 3% of that market. So opportunities in the region are beyond our financing. It's, and it's a good way to enter that market no? in, a, in a safe and low risk environment. These are uh, the sectors that we finance and this is the distribution. We finance about 50% uh, goes into infrastructure with uh, energy transport and water and sanitation. 20% goes to social sectors like education, work, social protection and health services. We have another 20% for institutions for development. And this includes things like governance, competitiveness, capital markets, public sector reform and fiscal and economic issues. And another 15% goes to climate change and sustainability which is things like forestry, agriculture, tourism, biodiversity, and sustainable cities. Uh, first, uh, an important uh, clarification. There's always confusion around what type of procurement are we talking about? And there are typically three different types with the ID. The project procurement, which is, is we give funding to the borrowing member countries in, in the region for a broad range of loans and development programs. And these operation involve a procurement processes that generate between 20,000 and 30,000 contracts every year for firms that are, and individuals that are eligible to supply goods, works and consulting services. So who is eligible to participate? Any firm from our member countries, okay? And today we're gonna be talking about this procurement, the project procurement, the procurement for our, uh, for executing our projects. There's another type of procurement, which is the corporate. So we as an institution also need to buy things to make things work. And that's what uh, corporate procurement refers to. And there's another type of, of procurement that is more related to bank executed operational work. And this is a technical corporations that are uh, directly executed by the bank and are of intellectual and advisory nature. It's very limited budget for the purchase of goods. It's typically consultancies. And, and this is uh, uh, managed by the bank directly because all the project procurement that we're gonna discuss is executed by, by the countries, by the executed agencies in, in the countries, okay? I hope that that helps to clarify. And now, Another thing that is very important to understand for procurement IDIDB is how that fits into the project cycle, okay? And we have here uh, our three main uh, stages in, in the project cycle. We have the programming stage, and it's when the country strategy is developed. This strategic document sets for the development challenges that are identified by the government and the bank, and as well as a coordinated response to these challenges. This includes the strategic lines of action that we're gonna uh, implement in the country. So it's already a good indication on the country development priorities for the coming years. So we, we recommend 
uh, all the firms. Uh, this is a long game. Is is you have to think in, in in the long term. And the first thing is to start uh, reading these country strategies to understanding uh, what are the priorities in the, of, of the countries. Then we have the preparation and the approval stages. And here is where, sorry, where the bank and the country only identify the initiatives to be incorporated to the bank's active pipeline and the projects are created. These, there are a series of documents that are prepared to define these projects, which are ultimately approved by the board of directors. And once approved, you have more detailed information, including a pro procurement plan with the procurement processes that will be needed for the project. So this is another important thing to check out. You have to go into the projects that are available in a website, go to the project documents and, and start checking the procurement plans because this will give you an idea of the future procurement opportunities. This preparation and approval stage uh, takes around uh, from three to six months, just to give you an idea. And finally, we have the implementation stage of the project. And here's where the procurement happens. At this stage is when you will see the specific procurement notices for the goods, works, and non-consulting and consulting services needed for the execution of the project. So basically here is where you find the bidding opportunities. You can also find a contract award notices, which are helpful to understand who is winning the contracts in, in the region. Here uh, you will you have links, so you can go and check out all these uh, documents in our website. And also I will present later uh, an example on how you can find all of this. Another important thing to understand is the roles and responsibilities. Um, you have the borrowing and the executing agency, and they are the ones uh, planning, evaluating, awarding the contracts, and managing the contracts. So they are the ones doing the procurement, and they have the direct interaction with the business community, with you. And you communicate through the standard bidding documents. They let you know what they need through those standard bidding documents. And then uh, if you end up winning a contract, you sign the contract with the borrowing and executing agency. We, what's, what's our role here? We uh, finance the project and we oversee the compliance with our procurement policy. We don't have any contractual relationship with the business community. Everything's between the executing agency and, and you with firms. We have a team of procurement specialists that are members in all project teams from the design stage that operate from one of the 26 country offices in the region. So we have a, a core team in headquarters, and then we have at least one or two procurement specialists in every single country office. So they is very decentralized and they, they are always there from the design stage of the project. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our new procurement policy because it has very interesting features that I think are going to be uh, of your interest. So we know that the LAC region is trying to find ways to finance these increasingly complex development challenges. We have identified one of the three of the main challenges, which is social exclusion and inequality, low productivity and innovation, and limited economic integration. We had an update to our institutional strategy from 2020-23 and identified three key operational areas to better address these development challenges, which are innovation and technology, resource mobilization, and the cross-cutting issues of gender, climate change, and transparency. And this, uh, in addition to this, is the 2025 vision uh, that uh, Anthony shared with us. Uh, those are challenges that we we are willing to tackle in the coming years. So how procurement is important to all of this, to, to support all of these uh, uh, challenges. So procurement is a tool to address these priorities and to accelerate the region's development through new selection methods, the allow the adoption of new technologies and innovation. We also uh, now facilitate increased dialogue with the market. We have incorporated sustainability concepts in the new policy. We also uh, facilitate the optimization of value for money with the inclusion of criteria that is uh, different to price and that allows the selection of the most advantageous 
offer, not only the lowest evaluated bid, and we also facilitate uh, the co-financing of projects. We we have mechanisms now that that facilitate coordination with other MDBs to to make these uh, co-financing projects more efficient. So these are the key features of the of the new policy, and I'm going to go on a little detail on some of the most relevant. For instance, um, some of the additions were new procurement methods. Some of them are a competitive dialogue. And this, this method allows the dynamic interaction of the borrower with the bidders. Under this method, the borrower engages in a dialogue with the companies that are initially selected with the aim of identifying and specifying suitable alternative solutions. And, and in this method, you don't you, you know uh, you have a problem and that you need a solution, but you don't have a, a definition of the solution. You do this in terms of the functional spe specifications, no? the things that you need this, this solution to do for you for solve your problem. So there's a, there's a little bit of freedom to define alternative solutions with different providers that could satisfy that, that need that you have. And you can have this process of interaction with the market before uh, for, to, the, for, to define these specifications. And, and then you can invite firms to submit the competitive bids. We also have another uh, method that is called the innovation partnership. And this is a multi-stage procedure where the borrower needs a solution that is not readily available in the market. So it involves the creation of an innovative solution. We also added new market approaches and evaluation criteria, such as the most advantageous bit that I was just mentioning, that you can, you can consider factors as cost, quality, risk, innovation, sustainability, life cycle. And this means that the most advantageous bid, but not necessarily the lowest evaluated price, is the one that has to be selected for award. We also have a sustainable procurement, and the new policy allows the borrower to include these sustainability requirements in the procurement processes, which encompass three key dimensions, which is the social dimension with things uh, like gender inclusion and diversity, protection of human and labor rights, we also have the environmental dimension with uh, aspects of reduction of CO2 emissions, the use of renewable energy, or the economic dimension with things like uh, the optimization of value for money and life cycle costing. And the bank has been act actively promoting this implementation of sustainable procurement. Even since 2018, we published guidelines on how to implement green procurement in bank finance projects. We have grant resources available to implement pilots and develop knowledge products. And we also have supported the countries in implementing sustainable procurement in their own procurement systems for over a decade. We've been working a lot with the region in, in promoting this for some time now. We recently published a diagnostic that shows the progress achieved by the region in the implementation of, of this uh, important approach. And here I, I'm, I, I put a, a link for you to access this report in case you're interested. Then we have uh, other mechanisms that were included like the alternative procurement arrangements. And this is the possibility to rely on and apply the procurement rules and procedures of another multilateral or bilateral organization. And this is to increase efficiency in the jointly funded projects. This is what I was mentioning before about co-financing. This can facilitate uh, that process. We have already mutual reliance framework agreements signed with the World Bank and the Caribbean Development Bank. We also have something that is called the Probity Assurance Authority. And this is a third party that offers a specialized probity verification services during the procurement processes under the modality of competitive dialogue or modalities that in include a negotiation. We also have something that is called the notification of intention to award and the standstill period. And these two additions go hand in hand. Now we have a written notice that is transmitted to each bidder that submitted a bid, informing them of the intention to award the contract to the successful bidder. There is a 10 day standstill period that applies to give the bidders time to examine the notification and to assess whether it is appropriate or not to submit a complaint. We also now included the possibility to buy list goods and secondhand goods. So as you can see, there's a lot of information, a lot of uh, new features. 
And that's why we develop something that is called the Procurement Compass. The Procurement Compass is an interactive tool that you can um, explore on your own time, and it will help you navigate uh, through our procurement policy. I'm just going to very quickly show you how it works. It's basically a tool where you can explore the concepts that you are interested in understanding the procurement principles. You go and check the definitions. You have links and references. You have um, all the procurement methods here and uh, a clear explanation on what they mean. All the stages are involved, the days that it takes. You have um, even the full decision tree of all the main of the possibilities that exist within our policy of the methods, the direct, the competitive, if it's national, if it's international, if it's limited, if it's open, everything is here. You can also find here uh, all things related to the evaluation criteria that is used. You can have also the information on sustainable procurement. So it is a very useful tool. We know that procurement policies tend to be dry, you know, and could be quite boring, but we try to make it fun. We try to make it interesting and very visual, you know, so it's easier to digest. So hopefully it's going to be a tool that you, you will find useful. Now, back to my presentation. We were here. So uh, in addition to the compass, I'm leaving you here so access to other tools, which is uh, the procurement policies themselves and the green procurement guidelines that I was mentioning is an, and also a very interactive, very visual document that it will help you understand how we incorporate this approach in our projects. So moving on, some key factors for successful bidding, uh, and this I was mentioning before, is to have a long-term perspective with systematic screening. Um, this is something that we've heard from companies that have participated in, in procurement processes with, M, with MDBs, and it might take some time to, to understand. It's, 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 a, it's a new world, like doing participating in public procurement could be overwhelming, overwhelming at first, but then once you get a hang of it, um, it, it, it's very systematic. It's, it's, very, it's very easy to continue doing it because it's, it's pretty much standardized also. And once you do it with one MDB, you can do it with all of them. All, our, all of our policies are uh, harmonized. We all follow the international standards. So it's, it's fairly easy now once that you take the step and, and try to understand this, the world of international financing and, and public procurement. So there are like three stages. I was mentioning the long term where you have to go on and check the country strategies and understand what are the priorities. You have the midterm approach where you go and check the, the projects and the documents and you already uh, check the procurement plan. And then the short term where you go and check the specific notices that are already uh, the call for bids or the request for expression of interest. And all of this you can find in our web page. And uh, when I finish my presentation, I will give you a, a very brief exploration of the new website that we developed. So what are the key factors of this for successful bidding is to be strategic in assessing the market and understanding the competition. You also have to be aware that you have to contact the executing agencies for any specific questions on the, on the procurement processes, because as I mentioned, it's them who actually execute the procurement processes. You have to understand the legal nuances for foreign firms. We know there are language barriers and uh, doing businesses in, in a different region has its own challenges. So uh, we always suggest to contact the embassy or the commercial office, which are very helpful always to get information on all the firms that are established there um, and to understand uh, how you can partner maybe with some of those firms. That's one of the main mechanisms that firms use when they, uh, when they go on and do business in, in the region for the first time is to find a local partner. And, and maybe um, later Francisco will tell you all about the Connect Americas platform, which could be a very useful tool to, to identify these this local companies. Uh, we also have some resources and online information 
and I'm giving you links here so you can access all of that on your own time. All of our international uh, processes are published in the development business uh, website, but are also published on our procurement website. There's also the Connect Americas platform that Francisco will tell you about. And also the bank executed procurement that I was mentioning is not the project procurement, but it's also good uh, consultancy opportunities. And there's a specific website that uh, is posting all of this here and I'm giving you the link here. Uh, there's also an app that's called Build Americas that was also developed by the uh, Connect Americans team. And uh, it's designed to uh, increase transparency about upcoming infrastructure procurement in that region. You also facilitate connections between the infrastructure developers and the local partners and suppliers. So I'm giving you here um, all the instructions and the links to download the app. Also, Francisco will tell you more about this. There's also uh, the Connect America Suppliers and Solutions map. This was developed for, for the COVID emergency and it's an interactive map that has video referencing of companies and providers of inputs and medical services for the COVID-19 pandemic. So I encourage you also to go and explore this, this website and register your company. So this uh, executing agencies usually go here and check the companies that are registered registered and so it's an it's a good opportunity to, to connect the supply and demand for for uh, inputs for uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now very briefly I will uh, show you uh, and we're very excited we're just launching the new procurement website it's like our transparency portal if you may where you can find all of these uh, opportunities that I was mentioning. You can find the procurement plans, the, the notifications, and the contract awarded. We are launching this next week, but I'm going to give you uh, an exclusive preview of the new website. So our intention is to make it more intuitive. Uh, we expand the content, we improve the search engines, and we improve the reporting and data visualizations that we, we have available for you here. Um, as you will see, the design aims for simplicity and easy access to the procurement information that is most relevant for you, the users. We uh, have a top menu here that will take you to the uh, most used functionalities. You can always click here and go either to the plans, to the notices or to the contract. You can uh, go and, and access the policies as well, or the documents, which is basically the standard reading documents that are typically uh, used to communicate with the business community. We also have a section on uh, frequently asked questions, and that's on the top menu. If we go to the, to the homepage, we see that it features a general uh, search engine and the three key procurement information that you always look for, the procurement plans that provide an outlook on the future procurement opportunities, the procurement notices with information on the ongoing bidding opportunities where you can participate and the awarded contracts, which provides information on who is winning the contract. We also have four sections with additional information, tools and resources. We have the business resource centers, the policies again, the procurement compass that I was mentioning that you can access and download from here and the uh, data section. Here again, the standard meeting documents and we have some multimedia content. Here you will have uh, one minute, uh, very visual definitions of the new concepts of the procurement policy. So here you can explore what does value for money means, what's negotiation, what's the best and final offer, competitive dialogue, everything that it's importance will have a one minute explanation here. So just very briefly, I'm going to explain to you uh, how you can consult the information. For instance, let's go to the procurement notices. And you will find here uh, a search engine. And let's see, let's say that you are a company that is interested in technology. And you need you want to know every uh, current specific notice that is available at the moment. So here you will have the, the results. And for instance, we have here a bidding opportunity in Peru. That is the due date is May 20th. You can go ahead and explore the 
notification is the call for bidding and it will leave you here all the information you need to participate this is a uh, for the implementation of a data center and an information security and data protection solution. So you can go ahead and explore all the details. Uh, it has a description of what, what they need and uh, specific information on how to participate. If we go back here, uh, I want to show you another interesting section, which is the award contracts uh, section. Here is where you can check um, who's winning the contracts, no? And we have uh, two possibilities. We have the list view and we have a, a filter so you can check the information. Let's see what happened. Uh, let's try to find information for Israeli companies, for instance, for the last two years. Let's see, we have a supplier country with Israel and uh, let's see in goods and works. In Goods and Works, there's one contract that was uh, uh, awarded to an Israeli company. You have all the details here. It's for a um, computer storage devices in Uruguay, right? By Elbit Systems. If we go and do the same search, but now for consulting services for Israeli firms, let's see what we can find. Israel and for the last two years. Oops, sorry, it's moving like crazy. It's my mouse. So here, so there's no uh, information here too. We have two, two contracts on per, uh, technical assistant advisory services in Peru. And uh, that was an individual consultant. And here is a consulting firm, CyberTocat, which is cybersecurity. It's for uh, Chile, a technical study for Chile. So we don't only have this uh, list view, but we have a visualization for it. Where you can find a dashboard with predetermined graphics and tables with the most sought after analysis. Again, you can filter the information according to your needs. Let's say you need information for the last decade and you can uh, find information on the distribution of goods and work and consulting services. You can find uh, information on the contracts by sector over time. You can find information on the top borrower countries, the top supplier countries. You can find the top supplier companies, the contracts by sector, distributed by sector. And you, you it, the, the filters are interactive. Let's say you're interested in a, a set of supplier countries that you want to compare. So you can go ahead and select those countries and the information will be uh, immediately updated. So you can play around with the tool and, and this is a step forward transparency. And it's also useful to understand uh, what's going on in in, in the market in the region. Um, I think that's all that I will show you today on the website, but it's going to be released uh, this coming Monday. So you will have uh, time to explore it on your own time. And with this, I will uh, finish my presentation and I'm ready to answer any question that you may have. Thank you, Ejao. Thank you, Adriana. Uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful presentation and, uh, and uh, congratulations on the new website. It looks very good. Uh, and uh, I will now uh, invite um, Francisco uh, Esterazo Las. Uh, I hope I pronounce it right. Uh, who is an integration and the trade senior specialist in the IDB. He will talk about uh, the uh, Connect Americas. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Eyal. Good morning, everyone. First, I want to make sure you guys are seeing my screen. Yes, yes we, see. we do. OK, thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for, for the invitation. Thank you to the Ministry of the Economy and, and Industry. My name is Francisco Trasulas. I am the manager of ConnectAmericas.com. And, um, and also, as you said, a uh, um, uh, trade and investment specialist uh, at the bank. 
So in this presentation, if it's okay with you, I will give you a brief introduction of Connect Americas, how it came about, what the objectives are. Then I will briefly tour the platform so you get a sense of what functionalities uh, it offers. Then I'm gonna focus a bit more on what we are doing with Israel. As, as Tony was mentioning in his, his introduction, we have a, a couple of collaboration fronts, one with Startup Nation Central and another one with the Federation of um, Chambers of Commerce of Israel. Um, I'll explain a little bit of what we're doing there. Then I will um, go into Build the Americas, this application focusing on the infrastructure sector that Adriana was mentioning. And then if we have time, I will um, try to finish up by telling you some of the new services and new features that we're developing in 2021. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Connect Americas is, a, is an online social media platform that was designed to help small and medium-sized companies in Latin America and the Caribbean internationalize. It was um, developed by the, um, by the Trade and Investment Division of the bank. And the way it came about is that we in, in the trade and investment division, what we do, our, our core business is to provide loans to countries so that they invest in projects that help facilitate trade or facilitate foreign direct investment. So because always the, the ultimate beneficiaries of our operations are companies, about 12 years ago, our sector began organizing uh, business matchmaking events, right, to connect Latin American exporters and buyers from, from all over the world so that we could not only generate business opportunities, but also begin understanding better the realities that is ex these exporters face and using that information to design loan operations that better respond to those needs and those realities that is these exporters um, face. So these events were highly successful. And in, in the year 2013, uh, came up the idea of trying to replicate what was going on in these business matchmaking events in a social media platform, right? We were seeing a huge increase in the use of internet for business in Latin America and the Caribbean. And also we were seeing that the use of social media in our region uh, was really, really high. So we tried to, you know, combine these two things and create a social media platform that would be, you know, easy to use with a lot of user generated content. And that would uh, ideally help um, these small and medium sized companies internationalize. So during the first year <clears throat> we did a lot of research and focus groups and surveys to try to understand uh, better the, uh, which barriers these SMEs faced when looking to internationalize and try to understand which of those barriers we could help overcome with this platform. And we found three barriers that are really um, clear and that are present throughout the region and that are present in large as well as in very small countries. And these are first is the access to trustworthy contacts abroad. You know, we were seeing that SMEs weren't participating in trade missions. They didn't have in many cases the resources to travel abroad and do business development. So, so we felt like through this platform, we could help these companies uh, connect with, with trustworthy clients or suppliers or partners outside of their country. The second barrier that we found had to do with access to information. There we found a broad range of issues, you know, from companies that didn't know the export process in their countries to companies that didn't know the requirements in a certain country or the new private standards that were beginning to, to be required for the products in certain destination markets. So there was a whole um, learning and a whole uh, capacity building component that, uh, that we found was needed and that we thought we could uh, provide through the Connect Americas platform. And finally, uh, also a very widespread challenge um, that, that is faced throughout the region that has to do with access to finance. Uh, it's difficult for small and medium-sized businesses in Latin America to access finance. This affects particularly the services providers who don't have, uh, you know, a lot of times the collaterals that banks are requiring. And, you know, we thought as, as IDB uh, and particularly through our, our private sector arms that we could help these companies or the SMEs in Latin America find out about financing alternatives um, available to them in the region, both for SMEs and for international trade. So this is kind of the the objective with which we launched um, this. Um, again, to provide trustworthy connections, to provide relevant and practical information about international trade and business management, and to provide uh, more direct uh, access to, to finance. Um, so I'm gonna show you very briefly, I'm not gonna do the, the, the full tour of Connect Americas because I don't wanna take too much of your time, but I wanna show you um, the, the, the structure of the site and some of its key features. So as you see in what I'm showing here, kind of the general structure of the site 
is around these horizontal sliders, okay? Each of these sliders has a different type of content. As you see, the first one is purchasing announcements from private companies. So these are um, companies from all over the world that are looking for suppliers in Latin America and the Caribbean, so they can post these purchasing announcements. Um, companies can then apply to these purchasing announcements by filling out a form. Uh, let me show you very briefly. Here we have a company from Colombia that is looking uh, to purchase uh, pear puree. Um, and here we see some information about the buyer requirements. And if my company offers um, that product, I can click here on apply and fill out a application form that was created by that buyer with the information that that buyer wants to see in order to assess uh, potential suppliers, right? So this is a, a, an example of one of these application forms here. They're asking for information about packaging, nutritional facts, processing techniques, ingredients, et cetera. So this is one of the most used features um, of the Connect Americas platform. Um, and uh, and uh, just, just to mention very briefly, we have a partnership with the Federation of um, Israeli Chambers of Commerce, as I mentioned before, and through the Federation, we are identifying uh, Israeli buyers that are publishing purchasing announcements on this, um, this section of Connect Americas. The second slider we find is, uh, has information about public tenders. Again, um, this is a lot of what um, Adriana was mentioning. These are IDB funded public procurement that is occurring in the region. So here in Connect Americas, um, you, you will find information about these different uh, procurements. When you click on an example, it, it will give you additional information about that, that procurement, and then always a button that will redirect the user to um, the, the website, either of the procurement agency or of the IDB, um, where they can find more information and actually download the, the procurement documents um, for, for, for that opportunity. The third slider that we have are the, the last companies that have registered on, on Connect Americas and that have been verified. This is why these companies have all in Pro. This is a, a Panamanian architecture or construction, construction company. And, uh, and so, yes, yeah, so this is the basic information that you see on a, on a, on a company profile, a, a brief description, the list of products and services that they offer, the countries where they have presence, key clients, key certifications. There they can also state, this, guy, this company hasn't filled out that information, but any affiliations they have to chambers of commerce or any uh, trade association, they can also provide or upload brochures, you know, introducing um, their companies as we see here. And then uh, on the right side, we see the general, you know, public contact information of the company, a link to their social network, um, social media uh, accounts. And then you always find this section with the names of the people that are affiliated to that company and are registered in Connect Americas. And by clicking on, on this envelope that appears next to the name, it opens an internal messaging system. So this is another uh, one of these uh, connections tools that, that Connect Americas offers. And this is again one of the one of the most used features uh, on on the website. Then we have a, another slider on on business support services available in the region. Um, just to tell you that one of the pillars through which we disseminate Connect Americas is through what we call local partners. So these are local organizations like chambers of commerce or trade promotion organizations or trade uh, associations that help us by disseminating Connect Americas to their members. And in return, we disseminate through Connect Americas the, um, the services that they offer, uh, the events that they're organizing. So this is a, a section where, um, where we disseminate some of the information about what our local partners do. Then we have several uh, business communities. Some are um, you know, sector specific, some are geography specific. These communities function as, a, as an open forum where, where, where participants can upload um, basically three types of postings, which are purchasing announcements, selling offers, and opinion pieces. So they can basically write open text or link to an article or upload a document that may be relevant to, to, to that specific community. Then we have a section with upcoming events. These are both events organized by IDB as well as by other organizations. And events occurring in Latin America and the Caribbean and in the rest of the world. The idea here, and I'll show you very briefly, 
is to you know briefly introduce an event and then um, always link to uh, the website of that event where the user can find more information and, and actually register for, for the event. Then we have the uh, finance section. Again, here we, we are working with, uh, with um, over 50 banks in Latin America and the Caribbean. Again, they're only banks in Latin America and the Caribbean, so this wouldn't be a, a functionality relevant to Israeli companies that aren't based in, in, in our region. But um, just to show you briefly, um, an example of a bank profile. So here we see the description of the bank, the financial products and services they offer. And I can click on a form where I actually apply to, to that bank through the Connect Americas platform. Um, and then finally, we have a, a learning section. Uh, the, the Connect Americas platform has 15 massive online open courses on things related to international trade and business management. Um, and we have about 7,000 articles, videos, self-assessment tools um, designed to help companies, again, internationalize, find out about requirements to enter certain markets. Um, and this is, again, a, a feature that is really um, quite used by, by Connect America's companies, the, the, the learning section of the platform. So as I was mentioning, um, we have a couple of initiatives um, with Israel, um, we first started working with Startup Nation Central, where we did um, first a campaign to attract Israeli companies to register on Connect Americas. And I just wanna show you this very briefly. It was a highly effective campaign. We currently have over 5,000 Israeli companies registered on Connect America. So that makes it the, the seventh country that is most uh, represented on, on, on our platform. So I'm gonna apply this filter just to show you very briefly, some, some examples of uh, the companies we have, but uh, some companies in the construction services, utilities, business and professional services, um, ICT. So there's, uh, as I said, uh, 5,100 um, Israeli companies on, on, on Connect Americas. The other thing that we are doing with the Startup Nation Central is disseminate information about um, uh, public procurement. So basically these uh, procurements that we have in the public tender slider are being disseminated by Startup Nation Central, um, you know, to companies that may be relevant uh, for, for each of those um, procurements. And then, um, as I mentioned, we are collaborating with a Federation of Israeli Chambers of Commerce. The Federation is finding Israeli companies that are looking to source or to partner with, um, with Latin American companies. And we publish that in the purchasing announcements um, section of Connect Americas. One brief parenthesis that I hadn't mentioned, the platform is completely free. It's completely free for the Latin American SME, as well as for foreign companies. The service of um, uh, publishing purchasing announcements, again, is completely free. What we do when we receive a purchasing announcement is we disseminate it through many different channels, like uh, mass email, social media. We also disseminate through these local partners that I was mentioning. So this is a service that can be quite useful for uh, Israeli companies that want to explore, you know, potential suppliers or potential partners in, in, in Latin America, I invite you to, uh, to register on Connect Americas and get in touch with us to, um, to publish these, um, these purchasing announcements. Another thing that we did and that we launched about a week and a half ago is we created an Israel, Latin America and the Caribbean community in uh, LinkedIn. This is something again that we're doing with Startup Nation um, Central. Uh, we are currently disseminating this community. It already has some interaction going on, but we um, this is based on surveys that we did and with uh, Israeli companies on what would be you know the, the most relevant venue for a space for interaction between Israeli and Latin American companies. Most people said LinkedIn. So we have created um, this platform um, for Israeli and Latin American companies. Um, then I wanted to mention to you, um, something that um, that Adriana also mentioned that is the Build the Americas um, app. Um, so the way this um, began is that we were approached by the infrastructure sector of IDB. As Adriana was saying, the vast majority of the financing that we do for governments in the region is for infrastructure um, projects. And basically they came up to us with a, with the following problem and is, the level of competition in the infrastructure tenders that the bank, bank funds is, is low. There are many tenders that are declared uh, desert, deserted. There are tenders where we only receive one bid or two bids. 
And, um, and so the infrastructure colleague said, okay, you have 500,000 uh, business contacts registered in Connect Americas. How can we tap into that community and try to generate more competition in, in, in these tenders? So the first thing that we did was begin talking to infrastructure developers, both in the region and outside the region, to try to understand what barriers they faced um, when, when, when entering a new country to develop infrastructure. Uh, and basically what they told us is, was there were a couple of things that, that really stuck to us and that really informed what, what we designed. And the first was that when we find out about the tender, it's too late. It's because the tender is already published. I have six weeks to put together a proposal. And if it's in a country where I've never worked before, it's gonna be impossible because I need to find out who are, my, who are gonna be my local partners and my local suppliers, who's a good partner and a good supplier, what are the costs? And that's all that they're gonna need in order to be able to prepare uh, the bid for, for that tender. So there was that problem with, with the time and the problem with finding out who to work with in that country. So what we, there were some other problems, of course, a lot of companies were saying that the quality of the tender documents maybe was below what they were expecting. So those uncertainties were also preventing them from, from pre presenting bids. But again, this was a, those were issues that we couldn't address through the Connect Americas platform or through this app that we were conceiving at the time. So what we did is, as, as Adriana was saying, when a loan is being approved, by the bank in the in the board one of the documents that is presented is the procurement plan now the procurement plan lists all of the procurement all of the tenders that are going to take place as part of that project so we have information about tenders that are taking place or are going to be published in one year in two years in three years so that was information we already had in order to again let these developers know that these opportunities were coming so then what we did was we engaged um civil engineers that you know that, that, that knew the types of projects that the IDB funded, and they created the typical supply chain for these types of projects. Okay, if you wanna build an airport, these are all the goods and services that you're gonna need. If you wanna build a bridge, these are the goods and services. If you wanna rehabilitate a highway, et cetera, et cetera. So what we did is we developed software that based on that typical supply chain, um, the system, identifies companies in the Connect Americas database that are relevant for that specific procurement opportunity. So to give you an example, let's say uh, uh, Belize is building a bridge with IDB funding. There's an Israeli company that is amazing at building bridges, but has never worked in Belize. So they will go in this app and they will see that there's gonna be a bridge built in 2022 for $30 million in Belize. And then when they click on, on on suppliers, they're gonna see all the companies in Connect Americas that provide the goods and services required to build a bridge and that operate in Belize. So they will be able to begin contacting these companies uh, through them to network, to find other companies to put together that bid, maybe find out some more intelligence about that specific uh, procurement opportunity. Um, so that's uh, the, the, um, the kind of the gist of this, uh, of this app. Uh, it's only mobile based, so I won't be able to navigate it for, for you, but I just want to show you uh, these images that explain kind of what, what we offer in the app. So if you see here, this third image is the home, right? So these cards contain the very basic information about the procurement, the amount, the date when the tender is going to be published, the country where it's taking place, and a description of the public work that is going to be built. So in each of these cards, I can slide them right or slide them left. If I slide them left, I can share that opportunity via email, WhatsApp, text message um, with a colleague or a friend. I can also save that procurement. So I will receive notifications if there's a change in date, if the procurement is actually published, if it's canceled, um, I will kind of start following that procurement and receive notifications about it. And if I slide in the other direction, I begin seeing those suppliers of goods and services that are relevant for that um, for that specific procurement. So this is a tool that can be very helpful for Israeli companies that are interested in, in uh, infrastructure opportunities funded by IDB in Latin America and the Caribbean. And again, just to summarize, the idea is that here you're gonna find out about the procurement way in advance, months or years in advance, and that you're gonna get a list of local companies that could be your suppliers or your partners um, 
for that specific project. Again, this is a completely free uh, tool that you can download from, um, uh, from the app stores in your phone right away and begin navigating and, um, and, and getting in touch with companies in, in, in our region to, to, to present bids for, 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 our, for our infrastructure projects. Um, very briefly on what's coming, um, as uh, Tony was saying, uh, one of the big focus of the new administration at the bank is FDI, foreign direct investment. So as you see, Connect Americas is currently very focused on international trade. So we're developing new features and services and contents aimed at facilitating and promoting FDI. We are going to develop a app very similar to the Build the Americas that I'm showing you right now, but this, that is going to focus on all the technology procurement that the IDB funds. So you, again, you're gonna find information about procurement that is gonna be published in the future for the purchase of software or technological equipment, et cetera. Again, given the, the strengths that the Israeli economy has in these sectors, we think that this could be a very, very interesting um, app to, to, to disseminate in, in Israel. Uh, we have a, a series of activities uh, for, for women entrepreneurs. We actually just launched in the annual meeting of the bank an initiative called Creciendo Juntas en, la, en las Americas, Growing Together in the Americas, that aims at um, strengthening uh, women entrepreneurs and strengthening their skills for, for internationalization. So that's what I wanted to present to you. And again, thank you very much for, for, for the opportunity. And I'm open to answer any questions you may have about these tools uh, I just presented. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco, uh, for uh, the very practical. We, we can still hear you, okay. I, can you hear me now? Sorry, I think I, I had a problem uh, with my internet connection. Okay, I hope you can. So now we are entering uh, the session of the, the Q and A session. Um, so uh, please, I do uh, encourage you to, uh, if you have any more questions uh, regarding those presentations that uh, we have just uh, seen, so uh, you can post it on the Q and A uh, function. Uh, and we'll start with a question that uh, Oren uh, Barkai posted. Um, uh, I will just read it and uh, I'd be happy uh, if uh, uh, the IDB uh, guest can uh, answer that. So he says, I'm a small consulting firm with no knowledge of Spanish. What kind of opportunities are available for, uh, for those, for me and uh, how to approach it? Uh, is it any uh, problem? Uh, I, from what I know, all the documents are in uh, English, but is there any barrier for, uh, uh, for uh, people that are not uh, Spanish speakers? Oh, if I may, I can answer yes, to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, the opportunities are in the original language of the, of the country. But mm -hmm. if you don't speak Spanish, you can start with the English speaking countries. So. In the Caribbean, we have six member countries and we do have a lot of operations there as well. It's Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Bahamas, Guyana, Suriname and Jamaica. So those opportunities will be always in English and everything that you will do there will be always in English. So we have a tendency of companies that uh, are not uh, starting uh, teams in Spanish and that go, they go and participate in, in, in the Caribbean. So that's a, that's a good way to start. Maybe if you do well and you're interested in expanding your business to the region, then you can start thinking about uh, developing some uh, Spanish capacities. But yes, important to clarify, the opportunities are in the original language. So we have those six yeah. for the Caribbean, you have uh, Portuguese in Brazil, French in Haiti, and the rest is Spanish. Okay, thank you. Um, Very briefly, um, Connect Americas and Build the Americas are available in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Thank you. Uh, another question that we have is, uh, what are the um, difficulties, uh, by your experience, for uh, small and medium companies uh, that face, uh, that, what are they facing during the procurement pro uh, processes? And what uh, kind of tips do you uh, have 
for them uh, when they are preparing a proposal. Yes, maybe I can start with that. And if Francisco, you have anything to, to add, you, you can. Um, so there are opportunities for everyone. There are for, for big and small, because uh, you have all kinds of projects no? and all kinds of needs for those projects. So you have the very large infrastructure projects that maybe require uh, uh, the, the, the abilities of a larger firm. But then you have a lot of uh, small works or uh, consultancy opportunities in highly specialized sectors. So there's a lot of, of opportunities for small firms. So it's not necessarily that everything is for big. I think there's opportunities for everyone. Uh, the main barriers are, you know, um, this finding the local partners, but I guess it's uh, something that can be overcome by tools like Connect Americas that Francisco was mentioning. So there are ways uh, to, to enter those markets, finding these local partners, but uh, nothing, particular uh, particularly difficult for for small firms i mean it's it's a, it's a matter of finding the spot no the, the niche that is adequate for that particular firm i may just compliment very briefly Ayal. thanks sorry um no that in, as you saw the slider um with public tenders in connect americas there because connect americas is designed for small and medium-sized businesses we try to filter out all those large infrastructure projects and really focus on the on the tenders that can be served by small and medium sized um, companies. And then in terms of tips, I want to um, kind of re reinstate what, something that, that Adriana said. From what we have seen speaking to companies and speaking to governments, um, the ability to have in your proposal the participation of local companies can be really an important differentiator. You know, governments want to see that in these investments, there are resources that also stay in the country. So when a developer comes with their own suppliers from abroad, that proposal may be a little less attractive. So I would strongly encourage you to, to consider um, presenting a bid jointly with a local company. Also, a lot of companies um, are already part of, of our registry of government uh, suppliers, you know? So if you introduce your product or your service through a company that is already in that database, that may increase your, your chances. So I would strongly encourage um, Israeli companies to explore joint ventures for, for serving these uh, public procurement. Okay, uh, thank you. And we're moving on for the next question. Um, there is a question, how does the procurement framework uh, fostering disrupt, uh, disruptive technologies and the innovation solution? Is there any uh, anything that you can say about that or any yes. comment on that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, during my presentation, I was mentioning that the new procurement framework facilitates uh, the procurement of innovation and technology. So the new procurement methods that I was describing, the competitive dialogue and the innovation partnership are exactly that, uh, that tool to increase the dialogue with the market and to find uh, these uh, more innovative solutions. So we are not doing only these uh, predefined uh, specifications where I know exactly what I want and how I want it. But now uh, we know that development challenges are very complex and solutions are diverse and there's a lot of uh, uh, new ways of, of solving problems. No? So with these methods, what we're trying to do is exactly that, trying to connect the, the, the supply and demand for these innovative uh, solutions. Okay, um, so I don't see any more uh, questions uh, at that moment. So if uh, no one will uh, add anything uh, soon, so we'll, I think we'll move on to the last, uh, uh, to the closing remarks. Um, and so I invite uh, Victoria Flores, uh, who is the Resource Mobilization Division Chief in the Office of Outreach and Partnership. Uh, so, Victoria, the floor is yours. Is Victoria here with us or is there any technical problem?
I don't see uh, Victoria in the in the panelists right now, so maybe there is a technical problem. Uh, so if someone from the side of, of from the IDB can uh, uh, check about that, if not, uh, if she's not here, so I would just say. Uh, uh, again, I would just uh, thank everybody for being with us. Uh, I think it was very, very informative and uh, practical. And of course, we will share the presentation. Uh, oh, she's here. I see that she's here. Uh, but so, uh, Victoria, could you please? Uh, uh, I, uh, Victoria is having some issues with the connection. She's not okay. able to unmute herself. Are they able to see my messages? Yeah, Can we you, see you see we see the messages in the Q and A session in the Q and A. Uh, Victoria joined the the link of a of a regular attendee and not a panelist, so she yeah. can be a text and not uh, and not uh, open microphone or, or open video. Yeah, I think it would. Uh, we, we can wait a second, uh, one, a minute uh, to for her to join in the attendees. Yes. In the meantime, I will. Oh, yeah, you can see Victoria. Victoria, can you? Are you with us? With us? Yes. Here it works yes. now. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. So thank you so much. And uh, sorry about that. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, nice uh, to meet you, everyone, and and uh, good afternoon. I would like to. Um, thank you and, and thank the Israeli companies that have joined us today and are staying until the very end. I, I would also like to thank you, the uh, Israeli government, for organizing this session, as well as the embassy and our executive director at the IDB. Uh, I don't want to take too much time after almost an hour and a half and, and uh, that you had a chance to get an overview of our procurement policies and our new website that it will be launched in the next few days and uh, also Connect Americas, which as you have seen, is a powerful tool that we hope that Israeli partners will use much more. Uh, I just wanna quickly highlight uh, two ideas. On one hand, Israeli innovation and expertise are highly regarded around the world and in particular in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, on one hand, it has been presented today uh, Israel's IDB is the main source of multilateral financing for uh, the Latin American and Caribbean region. And this represents definitely an opportunity for Israeli companies to participate in IDB funded loans um, through our uh, procurement uh, processes. So we look to see more um, of your uh, bidding uh, with, with us at the IDB. Um, and second, as our uh, representative in Europe uh, mentioned Tony Estevadordal, our new administration uh, poses a big emphasis on working with the private sector um, and, and uh, we are doing so, we're doing it a, a lot more on the areas that were mentioned before on near shoring, digitalization, entrepreneurship, um, which our, need, our region needs it so much. Um, so the IDB will offer opportunities in these areas and I'm sure uh, this will be of interest for um, Israeli companies, especially in the digitalization uh, sector. We are um, uh, working more and more with the private sector, as I mentioned, and we uh, actually has, ha the president has recently launched a coalition to work with private partners um, uh, more uh, closely in these areas. And we look to seeing more Israeli companies working alongside with us at the IGB. Thank you very much. Sorry again for the technical difficulties and thank you for your time today. Thank you very much and thank you everybody and all the attendees. Uh, hope to see you again uh, soon in thank person you. maybe. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye everyone. bye. Bye.